Welcome to the GP Lama YouTube channel and in this video today I dive into power meter data recording and how some bike computers may misrepresent the efforts that you're doing on the bike. Now a recording is a representation of one or more events that have already occurred. These recordings serve as a means to analyze, review or communicate those events. Now, while this may seem obvious, it's important to establish this definition. Now, I spent a lot of time riding, testing, and reviewing cycling power meters. As such, a lot of time recording and analyzing the power meter data recorded from them. Typically, I focus on the power meter themselves, their accuracy, their precision, their reliability, but all of that depends on the data being recorded properly. The numbers have to represent the actual effort that I put in. If they don't, the data is pretty much useless. You can have a very accurate and reliable power meter on your bike, but that's only half the picture. You also need a bike computer that records the data as it really happened. All right, with that set up, you're either half asleep by now or maybe interested in what I'm saying. Hopefully it's the second. Either way, let's dig a little deeper into this one. Okay, scenario number one. Let's say your training plan has four by 10 minute intervals at 300 watts. That's a solid session. You've got a set of Asioma Pro RS on the bike, dual-sided, as you don't want to be second-guessing your leg balance, skewing your numbers, especially as you fatigue later into that session. You get on the bike and get that session done. Good job. But your coach then asks why you did four by 13 minute intervals. That's not what they'd prescribed. They're seeing a total of 52 minutes at 300 watts when you actually did 40 minutes at 300 watts. Now, this is a hypothetical scenario. This is not what is happening but change 10 minutes to 10 seconds. Leave everything else the same. Your training session is now four by 10 seconds. Alrighty, that's a training session we can all do. All right, you've got that trusted power meter on the bike. You go and get that session done, but hold up. Your data shows that you've done four by 13 second intervals, but you didn't. Now this is the scenario that is happening with some bike computers, and this is a problem. It's an even bigger problem for longer rides. The topic of sticky watts is not new. It has existed in a few forms for a while, and it's something the Coros Jura was doing with the SRAM Quark power meter when the Jura was first launched. Because of this, it's one of the five bike computers that I've updated the latest firmware and used for some testing this week. So the Jura is one of the bike computers on my test list, as well as the Element Rome version 3, the Hammerhead Karoo version 3, the Garmin Edge MTB, and the IGP Sport by Navi. Now I have a whole box of bike computers I could choose from, but these are just a sample that I've used for the testing this week. Now under my testing protocol for this one, all bike computers are mounted on the bike and paired to the same power meter. I then perform four kilometers of steady state riding and then four kilometers of 15 seconds pedaling and five to 10 seconds of coasting. Okay, jumping over to my favorite website here for test number one. Now all five bike computers paired to the Asioma Pro RS2 via AMP+. Plus. If you've seen my other content, you know this power meter is my current go-to. After riding with these, I am not opening new support tickets every other week, which has been the case with a lot of other power meters. My current data count here in the DCR Analyzer is 982 comparative data sets. I use these a lot. Okay, let's dig into the data. Well, all these head units are paired to that one same power meter. 222, 224, 221, 219, 228.95. Now visually, there's definitely a ride of two halves in here, steady state, and then I won't call them overs and unders, I'll call them start stops, which are more representative of a real ride outdoors or a bunch ride where you're coasting quite a bit through here. The numbers for the steady state, we'll grab here. 232, 232, 232, 232, 232. That is exactly what I expect to see when all of these are paired to the same power meter, but that's not the full picture. Jumping into the starts and stops. So 15 seconds on, five or 10 seconds coasting, and then pedaling again, rinse and repeat. Now we have an average of 234, 237, 233, 229. I'm gonna stop there because they're ballpark similar. Remember, these units are recording at one hertz. So once per second, there's gonna be an offset of plus or minus one second. But the IGP Sport by Navi is doing something different again. 249 average. That is significantly more over the 7 minute 41 period. And you can probably see what's happening right here. As I coast, the by Navi is holding onto those watts and recording them as power that I'm doing when I'm actually not. These other units are dropping the power number to zero when the power number is zero or very close to. Again, plus or minus one second. But this is doing its own thing. After that session, I stopped and unpaired the Asioma Pro RS and then paired to the Quark Axis, or the SRAM Axis Quark, that I had on the bike. So the same test protocol, but we're missing one bike computer for, well, this is what happened out in the road. Oh, <laughs> the Garmin rebooted. Oh my God. Oh, 
I can't make that up. The Garmin Edge MTV just rebooted itself during this test. Well done. Now that's really unfortunate because the Garmin Edge units are typically very average in their recording, which is why I use them. And they're very consistent across models too. So you can use the 540, 840, 1040, 1050 Edge MTV. We're in recording data and they don't reboot like that. These are my go-to. However, I think the Connect IQ apps that I had loaded on there weren't playing well with that newer unit. So we're down to four units, all connected to the SRAM Quark Axis on the gravel bike. Average numbers 229, 224, 225. Again, three within the same ballpark. 250 for the, uh, the Binavi on average. That data has been skewed by that unit. Steady state, 235, 234, 234, 234. Very, very close, as you'd expect. And when it comes to these starts and stops, we'll have a look at that. 265, 254, 255. So within 10 watts there, it's probably a little bit wider range than what I thought for those three units. But 307, 307. There's no question, that's gonna wreak havoc if you're tracking your numbers closely. The IGP Sport by Navi is doing its own thing when connected to the same power meter as these other three. The mean max power graph looks almost comical from the IGP Sport by Navi being way higher than all the rest. And the overall stats, we've seen the average power already, so 229, 224, 225, 250, but the weighted power as well is also skewed. 249, 243, 243, again, same ballpark. IGP Sport by Navi, 274. That's different and not in a good way. So am I making a mountain out of a molehill? I don't think so. You saw the numbers and there's one particular outlier and this isn't the only bike computer that does it either. Look, I wanna see bike tech perform better. If not better, then at least perform consistently at the same task as other devices on the market. If you wanna swap bike computers halfway through a training block, that's gonna mess up your zones. Now this is not what new technology should do. So five reasons this is a problem. Number one, your training accuracy goes out the window. If the device records longer intervals than you actually did, now by intervals I mean one second through to 10 minutes. The data is going to be different on, well, this IGP Sport bike computer. Your coach or training platform thinks you're completing different work than reality. It breaks the whole principle of structured training. Number two, progress tracking becomes useless. As cyclists, we rely on accurate data to see fitness trends over weeks and months. If your 10 second sprint shows you're doing 13 seconds, which over a whole ride of that occurring can result in a much bigger problem than just an additional few seconds of effort. Your long-term trends are corrupted. It looks like you're stronger or inconsistent when you're not. Number three, coaching and feedback gets skewed. Coaches or self-coached riders using any number of software platform make decisions based on your recorded numbers. Garbage in equals garbage out. You'll get wrong recovery, wrong progression, and potentially the wrong workouts being prescribed. Number four, and this hits home for me, comparison and testing just aren't valid. In reviewing different power meters, using one or more of these bike computers that skew the data, it's impossible. If one device inflates or misrepresents the efforts that I'm doing, the numbers mean absolutely nothing. In the case of cycling esports, where dual recording is commonly used to verify performance, we could potentially see invalid disqualifications being issued. And that's where things start to get really, really messy. And number five, the trust in technology completely erodes. Cycling power meters are sold on the promise of accuracy. If a bike computer can't correctly record your effort, it undermines confidence in the whole ecosystem of power meters, smart trainers, and software that rely on that data. Now, it could be argued that if a bike computer is consistent in its recording, regardless of it being accurate or not, then this doesn't matter. But given the issue only occurs when coasting, when you're not pedaling, it's never going to be consistent. Every ride will have a different amount of coasting. The only scenario where this isn't a problem is in erg mode on an indoor trainer. It could also be argued that sticky watts is an acceptable adherence to the Ant Plus device specifications. Yeah, but as shown in my testing, most manufacturers choose to do better than the standard and to not skew your power data. And yes, I am picking on IGP Sport with the Binavi in this video, but if their unit did actually, one moment, accurately track your ride data and power your performance, as they advertise, then I'd simply have picked another unit that has the same issue. This isn't the only one. And at any time, as we saw with Coros, they could release an update to their unit that records power data more in line with your real world effort. So it's not all bad news, much. Now for the research and testing for this, Bluetooth connectivity needs to be looked into. I was only using Ant Plus for these, and more bike computers need to be analyzed to review the data that they record. My final takeouts from this one is that your power meter on the bike may be accurate and reliable, but the bike computer that you connect to it needs to accurately record the data from it. If you've got your nose constantly in your bike computer and in the numbers post-ride, it's definitely worth checking that your bike computer is showing your real numbers. 
And with that, we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed the deep dive into how some bike computers record power data. As always, thumbs ups, subscribes if you're not already a subscriber. If you're already a subscriber to the channel, thank you very much for your support, and we'll see you soon.